Hey everybody, Mike Wardinsky here, and today I want to talk about thumbnails. Not the kind on your hand, but the kind in Lightroom. These little guys are really easy to overlook and not pay much attention to, but I want to do a little bit of a deeper dive into them today. But before we get started, don't forget to head over to naturemike.com for some fantastic articles, in-field workshops, and private post-processing lessons. So let's dive in. To get to the thumbnail view options, I need to make sure that I'm in the library module first. Then I can simply control or right click and go to view options. And that's gonna open up the library view options. Alternatively, I could go to view and choose view options from the menu. And that brings up the same dialogue. Now, most of the time, these icons are really helpful and have a lot of information for us to look at. But if for some reason you want to turn them off, you could simply check the show grid extras and that makes a lot cleaner space. This might be nice if you're showing your work to clients and you don't want the cluttered text. You can see how much cleaner the images look. Right next to the show grid extras dialog is an option to show expanded cells or more compact cells with a little less information. Typically, I like the expanded cells because it has more info. Moving down, we have a few options. We can show clickable items on mouse over only. If I uncheck that, you'll notice that I get my rotation arrows. I've lost my window, so I'll come back and hit Control on a Mac, right-click on a PC, go back to View Options. Next, we have tint grid cells with color labels. I use color labels all the time in my processing. Color label meanings are very personal, but if you'd like an idea of what a color label system would look like, I can tell you mine. I use red for photos that are designed to be blended together. Yellows are my panoramas. Green are high dynamic range photos. Blue are my TIFF files that have been edited in Photoshop or some other program and purple is for proofs. Now by default, this is set to 20% opacity. I actually like to bring the color label opacity up to 30% and sometimes even 40%. That just makes the color label a little more visible and easier to see. Lastly, under options, we have show image info tooltips. I typically like to leave that checked. Info tooltips are when you let your mouse hover, a little dialog will pop up and let you know what that tool is. Continuing along, we have our cell icons. So here we have our flags. If you'd like to use pick flags, go ahead and leave that checked. We have our thumbnail badges. If I close out of this window and I hover over these, you can see I've got my GPS icon right here. And there's that little tooltip that I just talked about. The next icon is telling us that the photo is in a collection. This one's telling us that the image has been cropped. And this last one is telling us that the photo has been edited in the develop module. I can simply bring up the tool settings again by hitting Command J. That'd be Control J on a PC. Moving to the right, we have our quick collection markers. And if I close out of this window and go ahead and make sure I've got my quick collection up here, if I click this icon, that shows me that it's in a quick collection. This is the quick collection marker. So if I go back to my view options, I can turn those on and off. Lastly, I have unsaved metadata. I typically leave that unchecked. Continuing down, we have compact cell extras and expanded cell extras. So if you remember at the top, we have a choice between compact and expanded cells, and these are the options for whichever one you choose. I typically leave these set to the default settings, but there are times where you might want to come in and, and fuss around with these. Uh, maybe you want to see the ISO settings or your aperture, exposure time, any of that stuff, even the camera that it was shot on. You can go ahead and adjust those. So if I just go ahead and click camera here, you can see I can tell this shot was taken on a Canon EOS R. If I come over here to ISO, it'll tell me the ISO that each image was shot at. If you mess around with these settings and decide you want to go back to defaults, all you have to do is click on Use Defaults. Moving down, we have our footer ratings. So I can go ahead and turn on our star labels. I can tell to include the color label, which is kind of nice to have because if, you, if I move this window, you can see when a image is selected, it turns light gray. And if I leave on the include color label, I can see it's blue and it's just a little bit easier to visualize. And lastly, we can check include rotation buttons or not. So that's it for the grid view. Let's check out the loop view. In the loop view options, there's not a whole lot I would change here. I'd leave these set to default, but just like we did in the grid view, I could come down here and change this to ISO, f-stop, really any sort of metadata that you could possibly want. You can toggle this information on simply by hitting the I key in the develop or the library module. 
If you'd like to see this information when you switch from photo to photo, you can go ahead and toggle one of these switches on. But you can't toggle both, you have to choose one or the other. So I'll go ahead and leave this like this so we can just do a demonstration. And I'll hit the right arrow and you can see there's my information right here. And in just a moment it will disappear, there it goes. And I'm going to go to Command J. And I actually typically like to leave this off, so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. There's one thing I want to point out in the develop module. So you remember I mentioned these little icons down here. Well, if you click on those, they actually have an effect. So I just clicked on the map icon and it's opening up the map module. If I go back to the develop module and I click on the crop icon, it opens up the crop dialog. Now it's very easy to accidentally click on these icons. So because of that reason, you might want to control click on your thumbnail or right click on a PC, go to view options and turn ignore clicks on badges off. And now when I click on these, nothing happens. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and feel free to leave me a comment or question down below. I'm usually pretty good at answering them. And of course, don't forget to check out naturemike.com. I'll see you in the next video.